Hi Capricorn, welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. It's Raina here. And just for clarification purposes, this is what I have renamed my former abundance readings that were geared towards a person's finances and their career choices and things like that. And I decided to broaden it out because people are at different stages of life. Some people are retired. Some people are staying home with their children and they're not necessarily pursuing a career. They're just really taking time to raise their children consciously. And they just want to be happy. Maybe they have a, a aspirations that don't involve some kind of career path. And it, you know, the irony of it is that sometimes you have a hobby that can turn into a business. That's what I'm doing right now. And it was a hobby of mine for years and years and years to read astrology books. My partner always says that he, for years, he would see me and I'd always be reading an astrology book. And he said, gosh, she really is obsessed with this, you know, but he figured that there was some reason for it that it would eventually reveal itself. And so the same thing applies to you. Whatever your passion is in life, that thing can propel you into an actual career. You can actually make money from it. And But the thing is, and I think this is very important, I've been doing this now, it's been less than three years. It's going to be three years in May that I started making videos for um, astrology and tarot. And one thing that I will say is that the one thing that holds people back is unrealistic expectations. You know, it's okay to dream big, but also realize that things take time. Don't don't be too eager to like start at the top. And be pa you know, it's like being patient but also just being realistic and and humble about what it is that you're doing and not giving up because you're comparing yourself to somebody else. Um, I think that's one of the biggest missteps that people make. Okay. So I'm shuffling the cards. I'm very, been having a lot of fun with this deck. Sometimes when I use a new deck, and I don't do that very often, I feel like something is off. And this time I have felt like this uh, great resonance with these cards. Um, if you have been following my videos in the past, you know that I um, typically use this Morgan Greer deck. I'll just show you the back and the front of one of the cards. And it's very vibrant and I will continue to use those cards regularly. But I've got this deck called the Wild Unknown Tarot that I bought completely not planning to buy it, just had a gift card and wanted to use it up. And that was the only thing I really saw that interested me. Had no idea what this deck was like. So I, you know, I was kind of buying it sight unseen and I was really pleasantly surprised. Of course, when I went on Amazon just for the heck of it, it turned out to be $16 less. So that was kind of a sticker shock, but you know, I, I didn't have to pay for it anyway because it was a gift card. Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> I was going to show you the card, but I don't want to do that. I'll show you when I'm actually putting out the card. So I'm going to do a spread with this deck. It's going to be a simple spread. And then I'm going to accompany th this um, tarot spread with an Akashic tarot card, which is not, you know which is not the, the typical uh, cards and meanings, so that will be a little bit different. It's more of an oracle type of a card. And I'll also be picking a Keepers of the Light oracle card. So the point of this reading is to get some messages from the universe about something that you're looking to do that has been kind of, you know, just getting kind of green lights and messages, okay? Oh. 
I think when I get, you know, when I've used these cards more, they won't, they won't be so hard to handle because these are getting kind of a little bit hard. <laughs> you know, to pick up and so there's not two of them stuck together and all that stuff. Okay, and um, I'm very careful about this um, tripod situation. Okay, that's that. So, if you look at, I mean, they're like pen and ink drawings. I just think they're so delightful. And there's like a peaceful quality to them, as far as I'm concerned, um, because the lines are very simple. So I'm just cutting the cards. I didn't even shuffle, but it, I just cut it. Initiation of the Count Saint Germain. I love, I for some reason, I always resonate with Saint Germain. I'm going to cut this deck and just pick the card that I got here. And we have Gaia. Perfect for Capricorn being an Earth sign, right? Gaia. Okay, so I'll read those after I have um, done the... <coughs> You know, the regular tarot. So we have here as the centerpiece. Oh my god, that is gothic. <laughs> wow. That's kind of creepy, isn't it? With the, was it a rat? <laughs> and and it's funny that they would choose that for this card. Oh my goodness. I I would love to know her you know what goes through her head. I might maybe I'll try to write the author and artists about that if she had like particular ideas in mind the four of cups is a card of dissatisfaction in life and it's interesting you see that she has here a moon i'm not sure that that exists in the other decks that i use um, the moon because the moon can indicate deception but really the four of cups is about dissatisfaction with one's life and for those of you watching this who can identify with that sense of disinterest in what you're doing right now, realize that if you think about it, that is precisely what you're trying to counteract. And you do that by following your bliss, because that's what makes you enthusiastic about life. With Capricorn, the trap that you can get into is status. In other words, I'm, I'm a doctor, you know, look at me. I'm, I'm important in society, but you hate what you do. You may be good at what you do, but you hate it. You don't like what you do. So it doesn't matter if people admire you. Um, that's not the purpose of life, to have people admire you and think you're a big shot because you're um, doing something that is considered um, a lofty profession. And yet that's exactly what Capricorns gravitate towards. The things that make them seem successful, um, that make them seem like solid citizens and things like this. You would be better off being a bus driver and pursuing your, if you, let's say you liked music and you might, might not, might not assume that you're going to become a, a number one selling um, a rock star or something like that, but you just like doing it and you want the time to do it. If you have a profession that uh, takes up most of your time, you have no time for anything else. Time is a commodity. It's a very valuable commodity. And people get too sucked into the whole money thing. That's the other thing that Capricorn may get sucked into. Oh, wow, look at this. I'm making all this money. Okay, that's great. You're making all this money, but you have to work 60 hours a week. Or you have to, even if it's only, quote, unquote, 40 hours, it's still, if you have a stressful environment and you feel like every day, it feels like terrible. That's why there's so many people on the weekend who are getting obliterated because they don't like what they do. If you know, you would have no reason to escape on the weekends if you every day was fun for you. 
And I'm not saying that every day is just going to be just like, uh, you know, a party. But it, it's you don't feel that sense of resistance when you like what you do. So that's, I just wanted to like make you aware that when you're feeling a sense of dullness, unsati being unsatisfied, boredom, that that is your emotional GPS telling you something and that you should listen. In the past position, um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember if this is wands or swords. I think, let me see, because I did have, let me see here, because it, it makes a difference. I think it's swords though. I'm trying to find Um, I guess it could be wands, because this is the father of wands, and it's got the same kind of branches, so I'm going to assume it's the two of wands, without having, yeah, it is, I see how the swords are, are drawn. Um, this is in the past position, the two of wands, so some of you may actually be contemplating leaving um, your location and moving somewhere else but there's something that may be keeping you here if you feel drawn to move and other factors support it it might be just the the change that you need in order to kind of uh, make that shift maybe you've been kind of in inertia the four of cups can be a card of inertia of just feeling stuck in whatever kind of like a rut, an emotional rut. And sometimes that stimulation of moving can be very good. And um, the wands connect to fire energy and that kind of stokes the flames of enthusiasm and makes it much more of um, a light, the likelihood that you will feel a sense of... Um, excitement come back into your life if you feel like it's been if it got drained out of you by let's say a job that was very um, demanding <coughs> and so what we have right now uh, well this is actually the spiritual message in this particular spread and I got this card for the reading I did right before you yours uh, with uh, Libra but it was in a different position and what I was talking about was the issue of grief and the issue of disappointment. And you can see, I mean, the five of this is the five of cups. And you can see that the horse has his head down. Um, when we think of horses, don't we normally think of them as, you know, it's like the symbol of freedom. And they have their heads like held proudly up and they're, they're galloping. Um, and they're totally wild and they're totally free. And this, this uh, horse is hanging his head like he is totally dejected about something. And um, so, it, you know, it's funny. I got the Four of Cups, I got the Five of Cups. And they're both cards that deal with emotional, um, either disappointment or disillusionment. You know, the Four of Cups can be disillusionment. And the Five of Cups is a card also that is similar to that, or you could even say an extension of that. So maybe you um, feel like a dream died that you had, and you kind of have given up on something. And I would ask you, Capricorn, why you gave up on it. I remember a woman who was very nice that I used to go into her cafe and I really enjoyed her, her personality. And, but I noticed that almost immediately after she opened this place with her, her partner, that it seemed to me that they were a little bit too ambitious. And I, it turned out that it was actually him. And she had gotten 
uh, she told me that they had opened a second location, which is kind of unheard of right away. Usually you wait to see how what's happening with your current business, and then you open another thing. And he had used her money, and before I knew it, I can't remember if it was a year or two years, the place was closed. I walked there one day, and it was closed, and I felt so bad for her because she was such a nice woman. She wasn't a spring chicken either. So she was an older woman who had a boyfriend who took her money to kind of squander it on um, these overly expansive things. And it turned out that they had a, a loss, it, you know, with everything because they were, you know, he was not satisfied with what he had. So you may have something along those lines where you overextended yourself in some way. And now you're just ready to completely throw in the towel. Don't do that. Remember, too, you know, this is important, Capricorn. You've been going through the ringer. You've had Pluto in your sign for 10 years now. Okay, now you have Saturn going into, you know, in your sign. Um, I think that Saturn will be a much more stabilizing effect for Capricorns. I think Pluto, you know, that purging... <laughs> may have been a bit much and it's not stopping anytime soon it's going to be there for another five years um because it's a long transit 15 years or so but the point that i'm trying to make is that these are lessons along the path and if there's something that you feel uh was a failure that you should have done things differently it's okay you don't have to um, be perfect in life. Maybe you made a foolish mistake. Who cares? I mean, you're, you're still here and you still have dreams to fulfill. So don't allow yourself to get sucked into self-pity or just negativity. Um, the pessimism that Capricorns have to fight against on a regular basis because realism is not pessimism. They, they're not the same, you know, they're two different animals. Don't, don't uh, ever get it twisted. What crosses you is represented by the Father of Swords, which would be the King of Swords. Um, this could be an actual literal father who um, did not treat you the way that you deserve to be treated, and those negative tapes are still running in your head. That's on you now. Um, don't don't feel um, like a victim. Realize that there's something there to learn from. Uh, one thing I remember hearing, which I think is like the greatest thing ever, is that even if you can't think of one thing that you learned from a dysfunctional parent, there is something. How not to be. <laughs> so, or anybody who's dysfunctional. It doesn't have to be just a parent, but anyone. How not to be. Um, so, but I'm, I, the reason I say parent is because they're talking about getting that indoctrination when you're a child and, you know, going through that. When you're an adult and you're in a bad relationship, you're old enough to know better to get out of it. But when you're a child, you're just sucked into it and you, you kind of get brainwashed to thinking that the parent is a god. So, um, learning that, you know, this is not a random chaotic universe. Everything is happening for a reason and it's on divine timing. It's, you know, so if you can just embrace those concepts, you're more likely to ease up and not get uptight about the illusion of time in the outer world, in the material world. Um, the other thing, too, about the Father of Swords, the King of Swords, this could be someone in your life who is predominantly air. Uh, their sun sign could be... Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. Libra seems like uh, the usual suspect for a Capricorn. And they could be problematic in your life. It doesn't have to be a love interest. It could be like a, a sibling. Um, it could be a boss even, because king, kings can be uh, somebody in charge. Um, but they tend to be cruel. They tend to use their words as weapons, their communication as a weapon. And... In the worst case, in the worst case scenario, they might even um, try to manipulate you mentally. Again, you know, uh, with words. 
trying to get inside your head that way. Um, it that could be a facet of you where you're being kind of cold. Um, you're not your heart chakra is closed, and you're not. Um, and, and when Capricorns get like that, a lot of times when they feel a sense of disappointment, they just close down and they become hyper-focused on their careers, um, on amassing money. And that can be bad because it's, it's a, um, an imbalance in their, um, you know, energetic field or whatever you want to call it. So what's coming in is represented by the Six of Wands. And this can be, this is a card of you might be closing on a home or again with that two of wands, there could be something connected to uh, marriage. No, well, no, six of wands is more of a, that's not, it's funny because if I don't have that picture, sometimes I get lost. Four of wands is marriage. Um, golly jeepers, why don't I understand what six of wands <laughs> it's like I drew a blank. Um, <laughs> that is like got to be the most bizarre thing. <laughs> God, that is so bizarre. I can't even think of... <laughs> now I'm looking at my regular deck to see if I can um, jog my memory. This is like, this has never happened. And it throws me off when I have this new card. I'm like, okay, you know, I have all of the, the meanings memorized. If I saw the card, I would have a much better connection to it. I'm looking at my Rider weight deck. Boy, this is, this is really strange. But the same thing happens when you're in a certain, um, you know, you're in a different environment. You tend to be um, discombobulated, and I think that's kind of, oh, okay, <laughs> this is in the, um, this is in the Morgan Greer deck, so this is a card that's associated with taking a bow and, and um, enjoying your success. Now, look at all these cards that I have mentioned. I did not seem to be describing success in your life, so it's possible that there is some kind of culmination uh, or, or uh, what's the word, where you, recognition that you receive. And you may not be like gung-ho about whatever it is that you're doing, but you're still good at it and you're still um, reaping the rewards from it. Because we have as the outcome the four of wands which connect to that marriage and home and that I would connect with the the two of wands so we have a lot of fire energy um, that is that is uh, part of this reading and how I would interpret this is that your career is something that is very vital to you it just may be the particulars that are problematic. So maybe you're going to figure out a way, um, maybe you'll be a consultant where you can take what you have learned in that career and simply be able to work for yourself because that may be the sticking point for you where you're being forced to do something for somebody else and that person isn't doing isn't aligned with you maybe if they were aligned with you you wouldn't even care about being on your own but Capricorns um, I think they tend to be team players but because you're a cardinal sign you do very well on your own um, you don't need to be prodded you don't need to to have anybody kind of um, keep you honest and keep you motivated you, you're uh, uh, the original self-starter so I could totally see you working on your own. Um, and so there, there's that. I, I you know, I, in my defense, I want you to look at this card and tell me if you could infer anything from this card. Anything whatsoever, except for a pile of sticks. Um, so 
Now let's move on to the two oracle cards, as I'm calling even the Akashic Tarot, I'm calling that an oracle card. For all practical purposes, that's how I feel about it. Okay. So, getting out the booklet since I don't have these things memorized. So this is the initiation, I like that, of St. Germain. Standing among the pillars within a beautiful temple, the Ascended Master, Count St. Germain, sends his light and energy to the four robed people who stand before him. It is time for their initiation. This card represents your initiation. It is much more than a change or even a transformation. It is nothing less than your movement into higher revelations of power, insight, and achievement. And the time is now. Some loss of lower vibration relationships, jobs, or activities may be required in order to lift you to the new heights and power that await you. Your initiation can be aided by meditation and study, as well as by connecting to the Ascended Masters with whom you have worked for centuries upon centuries. Know that you have shared purposes and activities with the Masters, even if you aren't certain of what they are yet. The disciplines you create now during your initiation and the work you do with the Masters will lift your service to the world and to all humankind. This is a time of abnorm of <laughs> I said abnormous, enormous uplifting, first in your energy and evolution, then in your manifest outer reality. The power that you hold within will impact every part of your life. That's, that's very nice. And then we have Gaia, Earth Connection. Be mindful of the planet. Come back to Earth. Stay grounded. Gaia is Mother Earth. She is the keeper of the light who holds the planet in her hands and heart. Her kiss on every animal's fort is on every animal's forehead. She is the life that moves through the plants, the sweetness within the honey, and the force that encourages the bees to fly. She loves, protects, and guides all beings. She asks us to love them too. How can we help them? How can we help the planet? You are blessed to receive this great mother card today because it shows that the earth itself, through the image of Gaia, is protecting your path. You are a strong, focused, and loving individual. Stay grounded and don't allow your imagination, ego, or fears to run away with you. Ensure your choices are for the highest good. Gaia is also bringing her motherly love to you and encircling you in a cocoon of peace. If you have had troubles with a mother in your life or are feeling disconnected from or grieving your own mother, Gaia helps revitalize that connection and will bring healing where it is possible. If you are a mother and worrying about these duties, know that Gaia is thanking you for your hard work and commitment. The earth is blessed to have you. And that is such a great way to end the reading because you are an earth sign, Capricorn. And I think the earth signs sometimes suffer from their need for tangibility in life. You know, um, especially in this day and age, we have such uncertainty that didn't exist in the past. But from what I have read and what feels right to me, that needing of guarantees is part of the old paradigm. We are here to be more, um, I, I, the word that was going to jump out of my mouth was warrior-like, but I resisted saying it because I, I don't like the image of a warrior. But I think the positive image of a warrior is somebody who is fearless, okay? And yes, not only are there things that feel shaky in the world, but then we have these uh, people trying to stoke those fears and, um, and make us fear-based. So... Just understand that you have this 
deep groundedness as an earth sign that you have at your disposal. And now that you have Capricorn in your sign, it's even more of an anchor. You know, when I look at the sign of Saturn, it looks like an anchor. And maybe it's supposed to be. I don't know. Um, but it feels like things can be a little bit more calm and the abundance is, you know, can be something that is not just um, sporadic, but steady. But make your mind steady, as they talked about with meditation. And then that sense of what they call equanimity can make it so that you're not being tossed about like a buoy in the in the ocean that's just churning constantly, that you're just very steady. And you let, there's a, an image of, um, I think it's a Buddha sitting under um, the tree of, uh, the Bodhi tree. And these drops of rain are just not, they're just falling on the leaves, but they're not falling on him. I think I'm getting that right. I hope I'm not mixing up metaphors, but um, but just be like that. Be in the world, but not of the world. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. My website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Take care, Capricorn. Bye.